start off by saying this is my third time recording this video I I don't want people to get this impression that I'm this nerd and that I'm this nothing wrong with being a nerd obviously but I just what I'm trying to say is I don't want people to assume that I'm the super smart person that's going to be able to articulate themselves very well because I've, I've always struggled with that so please bear with me um, these are just books that I became interested in and I went out to get them well at least this first book this is by Anne Rule and it's called Small Sac Sacrifices you may be familiar with this case if not a little to summarize it it's about a mother who shot her three children um, her name is Diane Downs if you want to uh, look up uh, the documentary there's there's one on YouTube and there's also a movie that I recommend called Small Sacrifices with starring Farrah Fawcett she is amazing in that movie I highly recommend it um, very it's worth it even though it was I believe made in um, late 80s uh, it's it's worth it it's not gonna I know people tend to shy away from older movies at least people around my age, the younger generation, but it's honestly very uh, fascinating and it really, it's not, the movie's great, it's not boring at all. So this book is by Anne Rule, it's called Small Sacrifices, and this is just basically getting into, um, basically the whole, the whole story of why and how it happened and this is her right here with her three children and I believe her husband at the time um, sadly one of the daughters passed away and thankfully the other two children survived and I believe it was the oldest daughter that was uh, able to confirm that her mom did indeed attempt to m murder them um, this is a really interesting story if you're into true crime. Um, I honestly, when I watched the movie, I, I, there was a couple of things that caught my attention and that's why I bought the book because I wanted to see what really did happen. If, for instance, when supposedly in the movie, in the movie, the, when the court played Hungry Like a Wolf, the, the song, um, Diane Downs started tapping her her pencil and kind of dancing along to the song and that I want to know if that's true or not along with other little incidents like that so this is the first book that I bought the second book that I bought is Psychopath Free um, recovering from emotional emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists psychopaths and other toxic people Originally, I thought this was going to be a book about psychopaths, and then I thought it was going to be about um, spotting out a psychopath, which obviously it, it is, but more so I thought it was going to be about crimin criminal um, psychopaths, but this is more so about everyday people, and so I decided to buy it. This It was between tarot cards and this book and for some reason I went with this book um, tarot cards are really expensive and it would have I would have benefited more I believe if I used my card to to get the tarot deck but I just for some reason felt more compelled to buy this and so far I have I have learned a couple of things and, and I've only I'm barely on page um, eight, 19. So there's 30 red flags, and I'll tell you how many I circled. So out of the 30, I, I circled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Definite. 13 uh, signs that I agreed with, but I also did hi highlight some, I highlighted one, two, three, four. 
um, of the signs as well. I didn't circle them, but I, I highlighted some things that I felt I recognized. So if you put all that together, it's it's, it's a good amount that I felt like I could relate to. Um, there's a section about vultures, and I just want to touch on that. It basically says that if somebody is constantly saying how much they want to help people, how much they are there for people, it's, I'm sh not everybody is like this, but sometimes it can be deceiving. Um, for instance, another another thing I learned was that if a person is willing to listen to you rant and and vent about your your toxic ex, for instance, for hours on end, then that, then they might not have the right intentions for you. The reason why I bring this up is because it's been a year since I've this is personal, but it's been a year since I've walked away from a toxic person. And I've healed a lot. I took, I, I took the burden of dealing with it on my own. But you know, I I was very smart about it. I told myself not everybody's your friend. Not everybody is there to help you cope with it in the most healthy way. And sometimes you just need to stay away from people. And I did for the longest time. I broke off friendships because I was even paranoid that you know they were reporting information to this toxic person and for the most part those friends I needed to stay away from them because they were still in contact with that toxic person and so I really took the time to be by myself and really emotionally and physically and well not physically but uh, spiritually mentally heal and it wasn't until a couple of months ago that I felt like I was okay with talking about it without oversharing. So, speaking of vulture, it's going to apply to what I'm about to say. I reconnected with an old friend and we, I guess we became a little, we got to know each other better. better. And I just noticed that he was, he would ask me, you know, is everything okay and I would say yeah and he would say hmm are you sure and he would kind of like pry and kind of want to get something out of me and in the beginning it felt nice to have somebody that I could relate to and they had a toxic person in their life too that they got rid of but I just remember one day having an epiphany and realizing just straight out in my mind I said it I said wow so-and-so is really nosy that's why they want to know things about my ex that's why they want to talk get me to talk about it because I felt like they were so bored and that they didn't have a lot going on in their life that they wanted to know a lot about my life and a lot of other people's lives too I recognize that they they would share with me what their co-workers were kind of going getting like they would they would constantly bring up how they they like to be there for people and how co-workers trusted them and how they were very close to their co-workers and how they after work would just talk and you know don't get me wrong like i'm not trying to self self sabotage my myself or my friendships i just it was my intuition that was telling me this person is different like i've never met somebody that has been so interested in my problems and in other people's problems and i just felt like he was he's just nosy he doesn't have a lot going on in his life and he just likes to hear people vent and he likes to I guess just have information about people because he then would kind of spill the beans about a mutual friend of ours and tell me things that that friend didn't want me to know so I stopped talking to this person and in this section about vultures it says that 
they don't like when you when you start to do better they don't like when you don't share with them anymore they don't like when they see that you're going to others for help and I've noticed that once I personally caught myself and and felt weird about this person I stopped venting to them I stopped calling them I stopped wanting to have conversations over the phone with them you know um, I noticed that they kind of became cold towards me distant didn't laugh as much when we we hung out you know with mutual friends um, wouldn't try to I guess conversate with me they kind of just kept physically would keep their their back towards me and till this day it's there's I just feel like this he's not he's not happy with me and how I've been acting but to be quite honest I've just been pr trying to protect myself and I I just don't share anything like that with him anymore and I feel like that bugs him and so it's interesting because with this book I feel like it's not so far it's it's taught it's taught me a few things but I've noticed how far I've come and how I'm able to trust my judgment and call things and I need to trust that intuition a lot better for instance uh, I, I highlighted this um, this passage that I thought was really interesting um, you know it's just it's just crazy um, toxic people condition us to ignore our our intuition and we must learn to trust it again uh, you feel that you need a little something extra something beyond your intuition I felt like that with with an ex-boyfriend I felt like I I um I just needed physical proof. I needed something to jump at me right in my face that like I needed somebody t to even tell me. I just I needed physical signs almost. And in reality, sometimes your intuition and your, even your mind is is like your feelings are telling you this isn't right because I feel like shit. But you don't trust your mind. You, you seem for me, I just kind of I guess learn to 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 say that's silly that's not real I need I need to be more sure about it I need more substantial evidence to to be, to believe that to validate my feelings and that's not that wasn't right if I didn't if you don't like something if you don't like the way somebody's treating you you know you should be able to talk about it you should be able to have an open discussion about it and and fix the issue but if somebody's continuing to do that to you then maybe you just haven't found the right person you haven't found that person isn't good for you isn't a good friend for you do you understand um, you can't change a person and if what they what they are doing is genuinely affecting you and your life and you see even that how it's affecting their life then I just don't feel that I don't know I just don't feel like you should put up with that and it's easier said than done but for the most part people that do that they're they're just they're draining it's it's extremely draining um so yeah I want to continue to read the, these books and especially the psychopath free book um, I want to continue to talk about what I've learned